right, you guys ready to go? Another beautiful day out here. Can't beat it. What have you seen out of Shane or out of uh, Gino just getting the shot? I think the great thing with Gino is he's he's prepared every day that I've been around him as if he were the starter. And so when he was able to get in there and have his opportunity this past week, he was able to seamlessly uh, get in there, operate our offense, and 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 produce. And I think this week, no different. Now he's into that that starter's role, and he's done a great job of preparing the same. Uh, Russ has done an unbelievable job of supporting him along the way, just like Gino did uh, when he was playing uh, the backup role to, to Russ. So it's been a good, seamless transition. Uh, obviously, unfortunate for Russell and, and having the injury, but feel great about Gino, and especially with the ability and the rapport that those two guys have, that as far as our, our weekly rhythm, our, our how we're operating is, is so similar to how it was going on before. Only difference, obviously, with Gino getting getting the reps and getting ready to take the lead in that role. Are, are, are there any things Gino does differently that can, I don't know, open up different parts of the offense or anything like that? Or? I think the the benefit of Gino is he's able to do uh, a lot of similar things. Uh, he's been you know in the league for a long time. He had a, a successful uh, runs in different stages there, and now uh, being able to be in the building here for a couple of years in a row, have some familiarity with some terms that have remained the same or some parts of the offense that have remained the same. Uh, you know he's he's able to really come in and handle the full playbook and and everything that we've been doing uh, at a, at a very similar level. So looking forward to working with him in that regard. What, what stood out to you about how he played in that fourth quarter? What did you say? I'm sorry, the wind got me a little there. What, what stood out to you about how oh, what he stood played? Out, yeah, how yeah. He played that I just think his command, you know, his command of the huddle, his command at the line of scrimmage, he was decisive, uh, you know, going right through his reads, had the ability to use his legs at times if it, if it wasn't right there. And so just the confidence that he exuded, the guys could feel it in the huddle, the guys could feel it uh, on the sideline there. So it was great to see him get in there and, and have that opportunity. What about his skill set makes him a good fit in this offense? Uh, again, I think his ability, he's got a great arm, you know, he can spin it all around the field. Uh, and then he's got that mobility where he can get out of a, a, a dirty pocket and move around and extend plays. Uh, both, of, both of those things really showed up nicely this past week. When Russ is healthy, how much does work does he you know, actually get with the fellow starters? During the week? And not much, you know, it's, it's the way the, the league works. It's a you know, the week turns around pretty quickly. Now we do a good job of, of mixing and matching some competitive scenarios throughout the course of the week. Uh, you know, once training camp ends, as the season's going, so he still gets a few reps here and there, but a lot of it is on, on the show team and, and giving a look for the defense. So his ability to stay focused through those and, and treating those reps as real reps uh, as he's been preparing, I think has been a, really a credit to Gino and a credit to his mentality and, and his how he operates as a pro. More than five snaps, maybe in a week, any one week that a backup would ever get. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit more than that, but not much. Not much. Yep. The situation is new to this team, but you've been through some quarterback injury issues in LA. What What did you learn about that process? You know, having to get another quarterback ready. Yeah, I just think uh, you know when when the the next man up is is a guy. Uh, like Gino, or like in the past, have you know been around with John Wolford, or when it was Matt Castle uh, way back when. Just those guys being able to step in, and then everyone else around them embracing them and, and embracing them in the leadership role. And and that's where Gino's done a nice job of you know earning the respect of his teammates through the way he's prepared, through the way he's practiced uh, since really the day I've I've been around him. And so uh, I think that's all just just showing up right now in the fact that everyone has that total trust in him to go out and operate at a high level. You've seen Russell kind of out here the last couple of days. What, what is he kind of, I guess, helping Gino do when he's when he's out there? Yeah, I think just talking ball. You know, talking through the plays. Uh, you know, you know, Russell. He's got, you know, he's got his injuries, he's got to deal with, but that's not going to keep him from preparing as if he's playing in the game as well. I mean, he's ready to go out there and start. He's taking every mental rep there is, uh, as much as he can do physically. He's been doing that, and so, uh, you know, and then being right there as a sounding board for Gino. You know, with the start of the preparation where those guys get together. You know, he's done his normal rhythm. They've gotten together and, and had that really uh, that that bonus day, getting ready to prepare for the Steelers on the player side of it, and then and really it's bled right into practice where he's right there by his side, ready to help him with any questions that come up. You know, whether it's talking little nuances in, in quarterback play, uh, cadence, uh, some of our procedures. So he's been great with it. So how many left-handed throwing plays do you have for Russell Wilson in the playbook? <laughs> Uh, he could be the first ambidextrous uh, guy to, to, to run the keeper game. I was joking with him on that. So wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if he could throw a pretty good spiral at the end of this thing with his left hand. Will you rely on Russell on game day, you know, in terms of what he sees or play calls or things like that? Or? Yeah, I think just that constant communication, you know, with both him and, and with Gino, uh, like we've done throughout the course of the year. You know, I think he, he's a great, uh, great help. 
he's totally locked into it. So it would, uh, you know, just fitting that, hey, he's, I know he's going to want to have uh, uh, some input there and in, in what he sees. And he's, you know, again, he's had so many great experiences, sees the field so well. So he's just another coach on the sideline now where, you know, his role this week isn't to go and play in the game, but his role is to help us as, any way he can. And he's so in on doing that and so willing to see what's going on that on game day it won't be any different. I assume you were, you were just hitting your stride with knowing Wilson in the game and feeling his rhythm and how he reacts to certain situations. And now you got to start over at zero in that regard. Mm -hmm. Smith, how different or how is that going to be? I think, you know, the, the small difference there is that I have had a chance to be around, you know, the same amount of time as as Russell. So I feel like I have a good, uh, good understanding of where he's at, of what, what he can uh, bring to the table. And so, again, just trying to get that that uh, game plan ready to go and, and tailored around his skill set, which, like I said, he's, he's done such a tremendous job with, you know, being involved and, and picking up the offense and staying up to date with all of our weekly little tweaks that we might have within a game plan that, that he's ready to go. You know, he's got the, uh, the keys to the, to the car this week and he's ready to drive it. Back to his Jets film for yourself to see how he plays in the start. Uh, yeah, I might have peaked. He's got some. Yeah, he's got some big plays in his history, man. He had a, he had a zero blitz touchdown for a seventy-something yarder. You know, some great go ball. So he, he's done a lot of great things in this league. So it was nice to go back and take a take a peek at some of the things that he had had some success with in the past. And then, uh, but again, just being around him uh, from OTAs all the way till now, I feel like we have a good feel uh, as a group of what what Gino can do. He said he called you. Um, after you got hired and before he resigned, but that mm -hmm. helped him want to come back here and everything. Do you remember that call? I do. Kind of yes. Yeah. Again, going back to having such a uh, ton of respect for him, knowing you know being able to have a chance to have a backup of his caliber on the team, and and then just being able to you know those first phone calls when you start to interact with someone and get to know them as a person beyond just hey I've seen him in a, you know a couple clips here and there. Or, know he's had some some great success in the past and just the kind of person he is uh how conscientious he is and, and just being around him he's that type of guy that just makes people around him better and i know you know he's he's grown a lot and he's matured in this league and, he, and embraced a role where he's wanted to be a, star, a starter and, and situations haven't allowed that recently so again he's mentally prepared and ready to go and treated as if hey i'm just waiting for my next opportunity like i said it's unfortunate that it has to come in this circumstance but talk about a guy that's ready to embrace it and that's gino you seem to make you confident that Gino's better you know, and involved in the Jets version of him that you saw. Yeah, you know, I can't really speak for the past of what, what maybe he was involved with there or how he was involved, but I just know what I've been around, what I've seen, and, and what I've seen is every day a guy that comes to work ready to get better, ready to improve, and not just with football, the way he embraces his teammates, the way his teammates embrace him. So he, he's just done a great job every every day I've been around him. With the with the mini break of last weekend, mm -hmm. um, did you go back and do any sort of broad assessment of what the offense has been through the first five weeks and any takeaways of strengths or weaknesses that have stood out for you? Yeah, I get a chance to have those couple days to, you know, probably watch too much football that's on uh, TV on Saturday and Sunday, which maybe should have taken a, a little more of a break from my uh, from my uh, kids' perspective, but hey, they enjoyed it right there with me. And then uh, having a chance, though, uh, during some of that time to go back and, and, and look at through what we've done, where we've been so far through the first five weeks. And, and really, because we've tried to do a really good job of keeping it up with it week to week, so you're not having to go back and self-scout you know, during the bye week or during the breaks, you know, doing it as a weekly thing. And, and, and it still comes down to really doing a great job with that consistency of execution throughout four quarters. And, and we're really looking to still hit our stride for that complete game where we can play that good complimentary football, take advantage of, of opportunities the defense creates for us, and have more than just spurts. How much can, I mean, obviously you want to run the ball every week, but when you're talking about a back out, they get first start in a long time now. How much can that help if you get the run game going? Yeah, the run game is always going to be a, a key point in, in trying to get things going. And, you know, however that plays out throughout the course of a game, you know, by the end of the game, wanting to be that that balanced attack. And, and a lot of things play into that. And being able to run the ball early is obviously going to help us out. Uh, this week as it would any other week. So we'll, we'll stay committed to our, our core beliefs and then, again, just keeping looking for that, that consistency throughout four quarters.
you did self scout a little bit. What did, what did you make of how you guys performed offensively on third down? On third down, you know, good again, a good area of improvement and, and going back to that first and second down where, hey, let's try to avoid as many of these third and longer yarded situations as we can. Uh, and when we do get in those third and longer situations, really that, that high level of execution where it's saying, hey, it takes all 11 and, and usually you go back and look and you're thinking, hey, it's this or that. And it's really been a, a collaborative thing of, hey, there's some, some times where I can put some guys in a better position to, uh, to make plays, uh, you know, versus the coverages or the pressure looks that we've seen. And then other times, where you know we can operate at a higher level uh, within some of the communication that's occurred, and I think you put all those things together, keep building through it, and you know today's a practice was a great example. Got a chance to have a bunch of third downs out there today, and some competitive scenarios against our defense. So just keep building and, and keep getting on the same page, so that when it does come to those third and six, seven, eight, nines, which inevitably come up in the game, we can execute at a higher level. What kind of help is having Gerald back? No, he's great to be back. You know, it's great to be back for Gerald. You know, he comes back with uh, obviously uh, first and foremost, glad that he's healthy coming off of COVID because I think sometimes we can start to take that for granted as, as we get further and further into this. So, you know, it didn't, it wasn't uh, something that affected him too, too uh, poorly physically. So he's able to come back in here and, and ready to roll. Uh, he's great. He's got his juice. He's got his legs back underneath them. He still looks fast and, and aggressively catching the ball. So looking to get him right back involved and, and getting him involved in the offense early. I think he's done a good job. I think he's done a good job. I think, you know, there's times, like we said, where we can do a better job as far as, you know, getting him involved through the whole four quarters of, of the game. And I think he's feeling more and more comfortable. And, and just like he did against San Fran, you know, there's points in the game where he can take a run that's a five or six yard gain and, and use those sweet feet, make the first guy miss and get up to the second level and, and create an explosive. So looking for more and more chances. And I think the more and more touches he gets, those, those opportunities will uh, be created by him and those guys up front. How involved are you in the communication with the position coaches in terms of how much guys are playing with Chad or Nate? Or how, how I think, you know, we go into every game with that, that general plan, you know, where we talk about it throughout the course of the week, knowing, hey, here's what we're anticipate happening. And then, you know, what ends up happening throughout the course of the game, and which has happened, and Chad's done such an unbelievable job communicating to me throughout the course of the game of, hey, you know, maybe certain backs, the way the flow of the game went, ended up getting a little bit higher. And, hey, we want to make sure we keep these guys fresh for, for the full game. Uh, so, you know, doing a good job of having a plan going into it, but then knowing that that plan is always going to adapt based on how the individual game plays out. There we go. All right. Thank you.